Softec VVK means big brake kit, and these are pre-engineered systems designed to work correctly with all the existing equipment on the vehicle. So uh, when you purchase a vehicle um, and you want to upgrade it for, for track use and you want to do a big brake kit, for example, um, all of the, everything within the kit is, is specifically designed and engineered to work correctly with that vehicle. So no change to the master cylinder, complete compatibility with the ABS and chassis control systems. Within the big brake kit, uh, you would get the, the calipers, uh, caliper color options are red, black, yellow, silver, or blue. And then we also have our trophy finish, which is the natural anodized finish, which has more of a motorsport appearance, holds up better under uh, high temperature track conditions. Uh, and it's also Teflon impregnated to prevent uh, track debris from sticking to the caliper and, and smoking or catching on fire, which can happen. In terms of what comes in the kit, uh, everything is, is a direct bolt-on. It's very rare that any kind of permanent modification is required, aside from maybe removing the dust shield or grinding off a little bit of uh, casting flash that's left over on a, um, the steering component, the lower control arm. Sometimes there's some little casting flash that can get in the way, especially as uh, the suspension cycles through in full lock or full, full droop. As far as the calipers are concerned, we have a number of unique features that, that make StopTech stand apart. We actually have a few patents of this caliper. One is this uh, patented stiffening bridge that's removable. So by removing these two bolts, the bridge comes off the top and the pads can be removed through the top of the caliper. Um, the advantage of that is it's quick pad changes. Uh, you maintain the maximum stiffness possible in the caliper. Some of the other features in the, in the uh, big brake calipers, most kits will have these uh, silicone dust boots. Those help to prolong the life of the inner seal and prevent uh, uh, leakage due to debris getting into the, the piston bore and damaging those seals. Um, and these are actually made of silicone, which is a much higher temperature uh, material than most uh, rubber seals that you would typically see. So they should hold up better uh, in track conditions. Some of the other features in our calipers are actually, it's called a differential piston bore. So the reason you want to have different piston sizes within the caliper is to prevent the pads from uh, tapering. So essentially, uh, if, the rotor, if the caliper is mounted, on the car and the rotor is spinning in this direction, for example, you would find that the leading edge of that brake pad, where the, where the rotor first passes the brake pad, would wear more quickly than the trailing edge of the brake pad. And that's because the pad material that's wearing and coming off the pad is creating a cushion that's preventing the trailing half of the pad from providing uh, the right amount of force. So what we do is we actually run a smaller leading piston and a larger trailing piston to overcome that cushion and even out that pad wear. So it's a common issue we see with a lot of OEM calipers used on the racetrack where they use the same piston bore size in both configuration where uh, you'll actually get uh, a wedging effect or a tapering of that brake pad. In this particular caliper, you can really see the difference between the, uh, the smaller leading piston and the larger trailing piston to overcome that pad taper wear. This caliper is actually a dedicated racing caliper with a, a stainless steel nose, which helps to reduce heat transfer, which is some of the options that we can uh, offer for a more racing-focused brake system. So as far as mounting the caliper to the car, we would provide uh, CNC machined uh, brackets with studs that would allow the caliper to uh, drop down in the correct position uh, and be secured with a self-locking jet nut. On the rotor, uh, we do an aluminum center hat uh, that's bolted to the iron outer friction ring. And what that allows for is the rotor to expand and contract freely from the center hat with temperature. So as the system gets hot and the iron of the rotor wants to expand, it can do so freely without being limited uh, by being hard fixed to the uh, aluminum center hat. Uh, we have two different options for the mounting hardware. We have our standard anti-rattle mounting hardware, which is recommended for, for most big brake kits. Anytime you're on a, a street-driven vehicle, um, you would want the system to perform like an OEM system in, in terms of being low noise, um, not having any kind of rattling or creaking that would be uh, disruptive to normal driving. So in motorsport and racing conditions, you want to allow as much movement of the rotor from the center hat uh, because the temperatures are going to be so much more extreme. Um, and so we actually have a secondary racing mounting hardware configuration that we call our max float system. Um, that would be more prone to rattling around uh, when you're on the street, but it's preferable when you're on track. So the number one issue that we see with big brake kits is wheel fitment. Most OEM wheels don't have the clearance to allow for the much wider big brake kit caliper to be mounted. So uh, most OEM calipers only have pistons on one side. And so this outer section would be a lot narrower on an OEM caliper. So we need to make sure that there's enough room um, for the wheel spokes to clear the face of the caliper. Uh, in order to do that, we actually provide wheel fitment templates on our website. Those can actually be downloaded, um, printed out, and cut out, and then put inside the wheel. And it'll show you exactly where the caliper will sit relative to the wheel spokes to determine if it's a no-go, whether a spacer would be required, um, 
or whether completely new wheels. So in every big brake kit, we would include everything that's needed, including the stainless steel brake line set that's, that's unique to that kit. Um, a set of StopTech sport pads would be the default, but there is the option to use the StopTech street pads. It would also include full instruction manual and any necessary hardware uh, to mount the kit to the vehicle. StopTech has four options for friction, ranging from a, a daily driven streetcar all the way up to competition pro-level uh, racing. So the Select Street is sort of an entry-level street pad. It's got some good performance characteristics, but its primary focus is low noise and low dust, uh, and also being very cost-effective. Um, the next option is our Stop StopTech Street material. Um, this is recommended for daily driving, low noise, low dust, perfectly capable of handling occasional high-speed stops, whether that's triple-digit run on a highway, maybe uh, going through some back roads uh, on a weekend, but still looking for mostly normal driving conditions, characteristics like low noise, low dust, uh, where, where the majority of drivers would prefer. The sport pad is for aggressive street, light track, and autocross. So one of the main things we find is that people sort of over overemphasize the importance of sport. So let's say you have somebody who is an AMG owner um, and um, they feel like they need the more sporty pad to accommodate the, the weight and power of that vehicle. Um, now if they're taking the car on back roads or up in the mountains all the time and regularly getting it hot, um, these work really well. But if you're commuting in rush hour traffic every day, stop and go and almost never generate any kind of real, real heat in the system, um, it can actually cause problems to run a more performance focused pad too cold. So these are our two primary pads. The, the main thing is uh, the street pad is for daily driving, low noise and low dust uh, focus with occasional high speed stops, where the sport is aggressive street, light track, and autocross. And with those two options, it's pretty clear where most people would fall in. It's rare somebody isn't quite sure where they would need to be. Uh, and then beyond that, we have our dedicated racing materials, which are uh, for track use only. We have four compounds uh, with differing outputs depending on the use of the vehicle. So if it's on a track-driven vehicle on a street tire, we would have a relatively low bite race pad that would prevent uh, the tires from locking up prematurely and, and making it difficult to, to manage braking, all the way up to a very high bite uh, pro-level compound that you would see in something like World Challenge or IMSA or uh, US Touring Car, NASA ST4, SECA Club Racing, all those types of, of applications. The Select Street, Street, and Sport are all available for the majority of OE fitments, where most of the racing compounds are only available for stop tech big brake kits. So the number one question we get in friction is, what's the best brake pad for my car? Well, best is always relative. In the same way you wouldn't recommend a, a running shoe if you were gonna hike the Appalachian Trail, um, you wouldn't recommend a racing pad for something that's gonna be daily driven. So the most important thing is to really understand what your usage is and then buy the appropriate pad for that. That's going to ensure the best performance and characteristics for what you're doing as opposed to the best based on something that might be appropriate for a professional race car driver on a racetrack. So all big brake kits will include the bracket to mount the caliper to the vehicle. You would mount the bracket to the spindle and then the caliper would slide onto the studs and then be held down with the provided hardware. So StopTech sport rotors are gonna be made from the best available Centric blanks. And Centric offers replacement rotors from 1937 up through the current generation of vehicles. Um, so we're able to offer slotted drilled and drilled and slotted rotors for nearly every vehicle uh, that's in, on the road today. Um, some of the features include this black e-coat that's on the hubs and vanes. So it's actually on the inside of the rotor as well as in the internal vane structure. And that helps to prevent the rotor from, from essentially rusting onto the hub face and from the rotor from rusting from the inside out if it's in a high salt environment. One of the questions we get asked most often is, is what is the best rotor, slotted or drilled or drilled and slotted? Um, when it comes down to pure performance, we always recommend slotted. The advantage of slotting is leading edges for the pads to actually bite into to generate more uh, friction or initial bite and they'll also um, maintain a fresh pad surface. So if you ever do overheat the pads, it will help to uh, remove the glazing that can build up from an overheated pad surface and, and provide uh, optimal consistent performance. Drilled rotors do that as well, um, but the issue with drilled rotors is um, they provide um, points where cracking can develop. Uh, it's usually not an issue on any kind of a street-driven vehicle, but if the vehicle is, is used for anything heavy-duty like towing or hauling, um, constantly being driven on mountain roads um, or in a racing environment, we wouldn't recommend it because of the potential for premature cracking in those, those high temperature conditions. 
Uh, as far as drilled and slotted, um, it's kind of considered more of an appearance upgrade, um, but it does definitely provide more initial bite um, than, a, than a plain face or blank rotor. The StopTech brake lines use a stainless steel braid over a Teflon inner liner, and then use a PVC coating on top of that to protect the uh, inner braid, or protect the, uh, the stainless braid. The advantage of stainless steel brake lines is they have less um, compliance. They don't swell up and, and balloon up uh, the way that a rubber line potentially can do, especially as it gets older. So the advantage of a stainless steel brake line is going to be a higher, firmer, more responsive brake pedal that will maintain that feel throughout the life of the part where a rubber, rubber line will slowly degrade and the pedal feel will get worse and worse over time. It's slow so most people don't notice it. It's also less noticeable on a brand new car, but an older car that gets a stainless steel line upgrade, some fresh fluid and a bleed will generally see a significant improvement in brake pedal feel. Stainless steel brake lines are available for a number of OE applications direct fit with the stock caliper as well as included in all of the big brake kits. All stop deck lines are also uh, built to meet the DOT uh, specification to make them road legal in all 50 states uh, and we also pressure test every single line we make to 4500 psi. When you're installing brake lines it's always a good idea to also think about buying new fluid. So StopTech orders two levels of fluid, uh, a 600 and a 660 degree fluid. Uh, that relates to the temperature at which the fluid would then boil. When you're on the racetrack or doing something motorsport focused uh, it's not uncommon to get uh, a little bit of a soft pedal from the fluid boiling. So this will raise the boiling point of the fluid and ensure that the pedal always stays high and firm. Um, and it's always a good idea to include that with brake lines because you will need to bleed the system after they're installed. So after you've installed a big brake kit, some of the things that you can expect to see uh, in terms of improvements, the main, the main thing you're going to notice is a change in pedal feel and responsiveness. So um, our calipers are going to be much different than stock, and so what that's going to mean is as you apply the brake pedal, it's going to be a higher and firmer brake pedal um, that's very easy to modulate and control. So that means as if you're braking hard into a corner and you're, you're right at the limit of, of the tire's grip, um, you can really control that spot where you're maximizing braking and not locking up or, or getting too far into ABS. And that's part of that stiffer caliper design, the differential piston boards that we use, and the materials that we construct the system with. Uh, the other improvements that a big brake kit will offer is a significant uh, component life. Uh, most of the problems that people have on the racetrack come from the brakes or the tires. Those are the two weakest uh, parts of the chain. Um, so when you have a big brake kit on the vehicle, you're increasing the size of the parts, you're increasing the size of the brake pad, and all of those are increasing thermal mass. Essentially, you can put more heat into that system without a dramatic temperature rise, and that'll ensure the parts uh, function properly for either the track day session or the race length. And then also, everything will last longer on the racetrack. So part of the issue with um, racing is you, you crack rotors, you burn through brake pads, you boil fluid. All of those issues will be either eliminated or pushed farther back to get you more time on track and less time and less money uh, going back into the car. So in my own personal experience, I used to track a, an 06 STI pretty aggressively. Um, I did about 20 or 30 track days in that vehicle. Um, I only ever had to change the rotors twice, and I only had to change the pads three times. And that was in a, uh, a fairly high-powered car. It was about 300 wheel horsepower. Most of the time it was on a street tire, but I did switch to slicks towards the end, and I, I never had any issues with regards to, to boiling the fluid or wearing out the pads. Everything worked well. Totally consistent through 30-minute sessions four to five times a day um, over the course of a couple years.